This is the John Oakley Show podcast. What it does is it obviates the need for the traditional pursuit. It enables law enforcement to be able to tag a vehicle, back off, and then track that vehicle basically in real time via a GPS uh, on a GPS map. And using those coordinates, by backing off, they take the pressure off the suspect, they take the pressure off themselves, and they take the pressure off the community as far as risk and loss, like you're reporting here with this horrible tragedy where uh, one to 37 years young is, is, is just taken. Um, and it's, it's exactly what this technology is for. It's helped to, it, it's helped um, hundreds and hundreds of times in the U.S. Uh, we also have the technology with Ontario Provincial Police, and it's fantastic that, that they're leveraging the technology um, to make, make things safer uh, up your way. But um, it's exactly what the technology is, is intended. It's what we've been fighting for for years as we uh, continue to develop and improve the technology and uh, you know, keep the technology moving out to the agencies that, that want to utilize it. All right, but Trevor, you said tag the vehicle. Uh, tell me how you would tag the vehicle. Yeah, so an officer would approach the vehicle of interest. Um, they actually launch a physical tag from their patrol car onto the back of that suspect vehicle. And then that tag is basically um, broadcasting its location in near real time back to dispatch so they're able to track that vehicle on a, a map-based display, um, basically leveraging GPS at that point for speed and direction of travel of that vehicle. And that, that then allows law enforcement to be able to take and adopt additional tactics uh, with, with either stopping that vehicle, you know, tracking the vehicle. Um, but the main goal is to take the pressure off the vehicle and kind of remove, remove the traditional uh, characteristics uh, of, a high, of a high speed pursuit, um, which often ended and obviously very tragically. Well, that's interesting. Taking the pressure off the vehicle in per, uh, the, the the vehicle that's being pursued, because the individual you're saying uh, this may lend itself to exacerbating a situation, knowing that they're being chased. So, is a lot of this based around the science involved and uh, how people might react or respond? Very, yeah, very much so, John. Um, it's very much psychologically uh, behavioral based, um, and we have. You know, we've been proving it pretty much every day here in the, in the lower 48 and also with Ontario Provincial that, you know, once a tag is on the suspect's vehicle, everything does, in fact, slow down. Um, decisions by the professionals can be can be managed differently. They have extended time to make decisions on how to deal with that vehicle and, they, and obviously the occupants inside it. Um, and it, it, it has overwhelmingly led to much safer conclusions with with no death, no injuries. Uh, uh, no property damage, and that that's been our company's goal since inception. And and we do, you know, we're very proud that we've been making a difference. Um, we have affected in a very positive way thousands of lives with the use of this technology, with the agency's use of this technology. Um, and when you know, I see stories like this, and and I, again, I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak on your on your program and, and field some questions. Um, I really just wish all the time that we could be everywhere um, that this technology. You know, was available, and and that this family was still, you know, uh, depending on how everything turns out as far as what what was all involved, um, you know, if we had an opportunity to help help uh, sort of avoid this outcome. Well, I'm still very curious as to how it might work. When you're talking about tagging, uh, it suggests to me that you've got to be in proximity. The car has to to launch the tag that sticks or affixes itself to the vehicle being pursued. So what is the range? Uh, what's the likelihood that the tag will take? I mean, does it ever fail to uh, adhere itself to the, uh, the vehicle that's being pursued? Uh, and then... You know, uh, if you miss, do you get a second mm -hmm. chance? I mean, how often do you load up? Uh, give us some of the particulars on that, if you will, yeah, please, Trevor. I'll, I'll answer some of those uh, in reverse a little bit. So uh, you have two officer, law enforcement has two, two GPS at the ready. So if you do miss um, uh, or you don't make positive contact for whatever reason, you have a second shot. Um, we're in about, we're about 90th, 90 percentile, 90th percentile as far as success when law enforcement leverages their training. And, you know, just like any other device or, or technology they use, um, you know, the training is imperative. Um, but do you roll down the window? Excuse me there, Trevor, just so I understand. Is it mounted on the car or do you roll down the window? Is it yeah. a handheld device? Well, we have, we have one that's, we have a system that's mounted on uh, behind the grill of the police cruiser. And then also we have a handheld device as well. 
Um, Ontario, I believe, is using vehicle-mounted systems. So the range, the range can vary uh, based on the training and also the policy for the agency. Um, but suffice to say, we've had tags um, that have been logged uh, successfully anywhere from a traffic stop up to an excess of 140 miles an hour. So it's a very versatile type of technology um, and very effective. And, and also, you know, high-speed pursuits, uh, the statistics indicate 85% of all high-speed pursuits start from a simple traffic stop. Now, I don't know the case of this one where the infinity was either a traffic stop or what the scenario was. No. But, yeah, the, the technology can be used on the move, if you will. It could also move um, at a standstill, at, a, at, at like it's something like a traffic stop. So it's very versatile. Um, and What's the range? Can use, uh, anywhere from several car lengths up to you know up to a traffic stop distance so it, it varies it varies with conditions and also again with training and policy of the agency i see and the opp has now implemented the, uh, this if i understand correctly they have they've had the technology they've had the technology in use um they've had success with it and um please report that there's additional dialogue to expand the program well, how was it conceived? I mean, there are a lot of ways, uh, you know, we were hoping to address some of the ways that, you know, you might deter people from getting into cars and uh, just being a hellion and uh, racing away. Uh, I'm just wondering if there are ways of shutting vehicles down remotely or is that too intrusive? Uh, how did you conceive of this particular way of operating? This was conceived, um, I thought of the, thought of the approach because of, um, this just goes back, goes back several years with um, when tire deflation was being uh, heavily used, it's not quite as used as heavily as it used to be years ago because of the dangers that are, are, are evident with tire deflation. Um, but it was conceived really to be sort of an anywhere kind of device um, where law enforcement could utilize this on any vehicle that they, that they see necessary as far as you know, breaking the law, uh, need to get stopped, et cetera. Um, the technology also uh, was was sort of born out of uh, or out of this necessity. Um, you know, the challenge of high-speed pursuits has been a challenge literally since you, you've got four-wheeled vehicles. Um, so it was really a, a culmination of the lives lost and the tragedy and the financial exposure and, and just um, really uh, a lot of that hit home several years back uh, and, and led to the development of the technology and the patenting of the technology and, and also the commercialization of the technology. So, Trevor, uh, if somebody is tagged and there's no pursuit any further because the, the police have decided that they can always track through GPS, if that person were to, say, uh, race out of state halfway across the country, they could still be tracked or traced? Correct. Yeah, with our technology, they can be. Um, it's not a long surveillance tool. The, in, the, uh, the intent for the technology, at least how law enforcement uses it, is you know probable cause exigent circumstances you know they're not just tagging any vehicle of interest this vehicle has has definitely you know raised legal interest uh for law enforcement to do what they do um generally the, the surveillance does not last that long because their their really uh mission is to to shut the vehicle down safely um and also to answer your other question about shutting vehicles down say remotely they're they're you know on star general motors on star um that's that's one technology that's out there that if if there's a subscription present on that vehicle that the vehicle can be slowed once identified as say a stolen vehicle or something mm -hmm. um and it you know that's it, you know what uh, any tool to the fight to help save lives is, is obviously welcome um this you know uh the technology that we've developed is is again it can be used on any vehicle. It doesn't matter, you know, semi, semi truck, uh, trailer, uh, you know, sports car, whatever. It doesn't matter what kind of vehicle uh, that needs to be tagged. It, we can tag it. Um, and again, we're super proud of the results. And, and uh, like I said earlier, I really wish that this technology had been present, um, you know, for this family. Thanks for.